welcome to lesson four of Haskell for Dummies. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at data types, uh, balls, tuples, and list. Right, so let's get started off. So let's have a little look. Basic data types. And what are types? So we've kind of gone a little bit over types. You know, uh, here it says an expression when evaluated reduces to values. So what does this mean? Well, I guess the best way to explain that is if we look at a previous um, lesson. Let's zoom this in a little bit. Uh, what is this is saying is essentially, you know, it's it's giving a value exactly what type it you know it's going to become. Or for example, when we do, if we do a func, okay, and then we expect something, which is an int, and we return something, okay, so a and that we call a plus one. Okay, so right there and then, uh, func is expecting a value, and it will return us another value. Okay, so that's the type. We're, that in itself is saying it's a function. Okay, so ultimately we're using a type to demonstrate what they're going to be. You know what we expect the input, and as we expect the the output. And once we've given that the input, then this becomes the value. It's an int. As much as this doesn't have any inputs, so there's its type of string, etc. Okay, so I mean we can test this. So if I um, do a stack REPL and then I try and call func, if we just look at the type of func, okay, so we'll see here it's an int to an int. Now if we look at the type of func called with a number, then that will just be an int. Okay, so we're returning. So once we've called it, it becomes an int. So that's what it does. It's reducing and we're working out. So every value, you know, has a type as it's written here. And then types is how we sort of um, bring them together. Um, and then it sort of goes on about mathematics, which is probably bits you don't need to know as of yet. Okay, so let's have a look at a data type. So we've got data bool equals false or or pipe true. Okay, so that's our construction name. Sorry, that's our constructor name. So here you'll see it's got a capital letter. letter. So let's quickly just make that up. Data. Okay, so we've got a capital letter bool. And bool can have the types of false or true. Okay, there it is. So that's our types. It, remember, it needs to be a capital letter. And again, with our types, they have to be capital letters. Um, so that's so. This is called a data type, and this is a data constructor. This is a pipe which is disjunction, or you could just think of it as an or. So the constructor bool can even be of the type false or true. Okay. Now let's have a little play with it. So if we do an in, I'll delete this so it doesn't really confuse it. Um, let's do info of bool. If we look at the info of bool, it's written here. I mean, it's what's these guys, what it's saying is it's got lots of different instances, but we haven't gone into instances yet. Uh, and it's in other places. But let's just look at this part here. So it's saying the data bool is either false or true okay so that's that's inside the ghc so that's that's built in so what does that mean you know what what how can we use these types much like we've been using ints and string and and chars how, how are we able to use this bool so we can have a another look this demonstrates the type of not so not takes a bool and returns a bool okay so let's see how this works so if we do not true it returns as false. So in essence, it looks like it's, you know, it's returning the opposite. What I'll do actually is I'll return this because um, it's a little bit easier to show it here. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll comment it out. If I've not mentioned it before, this will comment out a line of code and then the compiler ignore it. So what I'm saying, it's not true. So you've given it a bool. So either false or true, and it will return the opposite. 
Okay, so we can try that again. So not false, we should see true. Yep. Let's do this little exercise just to help us. I'll pop that in here. So we've got a data mood equals blah or woot deriving show. We'll explain exactly what deriving is and what show is, but for now, just think of it that it allows us to, to show results, uh, you know, when we question it. So the first question is, what is, is the type constructor, which we explain. So the name of that is mood. And it says, if the function requires a mood value, what are the values you could possibly use? So the values are blah or woot. Okay, so it's much like true or false. Same as when we were passing it to not. You know, we can only pass not true or false. So I can't pass not, you know, uh, let's say two. See, because it's just saying, well, no, I want a bull. I, I don't want a, a, an int or for this instance, an, uh, a num. OK, so we're trying to write function change mood to change Chris's mood instantaneously. It should act like not in that given one value, it returns another value of the same type. So far, we've written a type signature change mood mood woot. OK, let's have a little look then. So oh, we'll put a little C there. So change mood, it, given a mood, it returns us woot. So what is wrong with this? Let's have a little look. OK, but it's saying um, the type constructor or class root, a data constructor of that name is in scope. Did you mean data kind? OK, so that's a problem. You can't use, you know, these values are usable, but they're not from a type perspective. So you can't just say, OK, well, I expect uh, something to come in of woot and then blah. You have to use this. So basically, because that type can either be this or this. If we're trying to do the version of not, this is how we do it. So we can pass it an M, okay, and then we return it something else. So we, we want to return the opposite. So how can we do that? So we've got mood and mood. So this is something new. So what we can do, so we can say, OK, well, if what is passed is a blah, then return it a woot. But this is a clever bit. We can then give it. But what if it's a woot? Then we will want it to return a blah. OK, so this might be confusing at first, but let's have a look what's going on. OK, so we're pattern matching on mood because mood has multiple options. It's almost like saying, well, so if change mood, we give a value and that value turns out to be blah, we want to return woot. But then if that mood value is woot, we want to return blah. OK, so that's quite simple. Let's go and test it. Let's do change. Oh, change mood and we're going to pass it blah. OK, that's woot. And then we're going to do the same. And we'll pass it woot and then it hits a second case so it's not blah so it's ignoring that and it's the second case and it'll give it a blah but we can also do something this is quite interesting i mean we obviously in this instance we can only have two there's only two possibilities because there's only two here you see so we can't go to three or four but what we can do which is interesting in this scenario we can use an underscore okay so we're going to take that out we're going to use underscore and that pattern means anything. It could be anything. It doesn't matter. You know, we know it's going to be one or the other, but it's always going to return woot. Let's have a little test of that. So change mood woot. Prior to that, we'd expect it to have blah, but you'll see it'll return woot. OK, well, let's give it blah and it'll return woot. So that's another little good thing to know. Underscore means anything. So sometimes you can also you can also use it if you're going to ignore values. You know, so say you have like we're going to give it an int, for example. OK, and then we're going to do. I'm going to put these guys back. We'll have blah here and then the first value. So if we save it, it'll tell us that it's expecting the first value. See, so couldn't match the expected type int. So we're saying the first value that's coming in 
is going to be of type mood. Well, it's not. We need to give it an int. Okay, so if we say, I don't care what that int is, you can pass me anything. I don't care. All I'm interested in is the second part. You can do that. So we can be specific and use free, for example, if the number's free, or if it's anything, let's do this actually. Here we go. This is a scenario where you'd potentially have more than one. Okay, and then we don't care. For this scenario, here we go, this is our weird function. Right, what do you think? So if we're gonna, let's do this, let's go, we'll call change mood, we'll pass the value the two, and then we'll give it a blah. What do you expect it to return? Let's have a look, so it's woot. So it's grabbed our first value and it said, oh okay, well is that is that two? No. Is it any int? It goes, okay. Is the second value blah? Yes, okay, return woot. So if you look, it's return woot. So now let's do the same with three. And we get blah, so it's hit it, you see. So it's gone, oh, okay, well, that's three. I've got a blah, so I'm going to return a blah. And then if we do it again with woot, doesn't matter what the number is, you know, we can give it something like that, 133, and that will return us blah. We'll go save it, okay, and it's back to all good. Here we go. Okay, so that's a demonstration of that. But the answer, you know, if we take this part away, um, would be this. Whoops, there we go. So that would be the answer to the question here. So that was that's what was wrong with it. And that's what's right, okay? And here you go, this shows you, well, this would be wrong, because obviously we can't give it a mood, but we can check how we've done it. Uh, we're pattern matching to see which constructor it's gonna be. Is it gonna be blah or woot? So that wouldn't work. You couldn't have mood there, because it's not gonna pattern match against that. It can only pattern match, you know, through constructors of this data type which in this case is these guys. Okay. So let's have a little look at numeric types. Uh, we've got various numeric types in Haskell. Uh, so you've got int, and that's what we've been using so far. It's a, it's a fixed precision of, of integer. Um, it's good for sort of, you know, I know here it sort of mentions that it's, it's better to use integer because you can handle bigger numbers. But in general, you know, I use int for, for, for a number of things. You know, if you, if you know your numbers aren't going to be massive, it's, it's not the end of the world. But then uh, uh, you want to use integer if you want to go a bit bigger. So word is suitable when you want to express whole digits that don't include negative numbers. And so then we've got fractions. So those are integral numbers fractionals so these are floats so it's a fixed point number doubles so it's double precision of, of, of fixed points um, rational is numbers represented by a rational of two integers let me see if, uh, so floats let's have a look at a float let's have a look at a float so if I do one Let's have a look what let's have a look at what the type is of what I might do actually is this because it's a little bit more in the middle. So what's a type of let's have a look at that? So it's a fractional. It's part of the fractional, okay? So a float is a fixed point number representation. A double is a double precision float point number. Uh, fractional number, uh, fixed, and that's fixed precision. I mean, these again, you know, it's 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 fairly standard in 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 most programming languages. So yeah, this this is stuff that you could be, you know, if you want to be really precise with things, especially if you start doing like three D graphics or things like that, these come in in real handy. Okay, so let's have some demonstrations of that. Yes, yeah, so that was the explanation here. Is most most programs should use integer, not int, unless limitation of types are understood. 
and additional performance makes a difference. So the reason of using Word, I mean, I've I've not really used Word that often. Uh, again, it's you know it's, it's similar reasoning. It's it's when you want a different range of numbers, uh, you know these you don't want to include negative numbers. Fractional numbers. Okay, this becomes interesting. So let's find out the type of divide. Okay, well it should exactly show us what we've got there, but we'll do it again anyway. So we've got something called, I was going to explain this before, but we've not come to it. So we've got something called a type constraint. So let's grab this, we'll copy it. We'll bring it in here, okay? So we're saying when the infix, so that's the infix of forward slash, which is divide, and it's got a constraint of fractional, arrow greater than, so it's A to A, so it takes an A, another A, and returns us an A. Let's just comment this out for a moment. Okay, so how, what does this mean? So this little part here, if you ever see an arrow like this, I mean, in, in it's called a fat arrow in, uh, in JavaScript, but otherwise it's equal to greater than. If you see something like this, it's saying that any of these A's is restricted to a fractional. Okay, so this A, this, and this. So, which is what we see here. Now let's have a little look. Let's do 1 divided by 2. That's 0 0.5. We can do the type of 1 divided by 2. And the answer is any fractional of A. Okay, so that's a type. We can do 4 divided by 2, and that gives us 2. Okay, so if we go up, let's have a little look. We'll go back up when it was declaring what was in them. Here we go. So we go back up to here and we'll go numeric types. Fractional. So we've got float, double, rational, fixed. Let's look at one that isn't, say, int, integer. Here we go. So what we can do is this. Let's see if this works. So we expect them, okay, because there we expect it to be of the class fractional, okay? So it could either be a float, a double, a rational, or fixed. Uh, scientific, but we haven't brought that in. So all we've got is these four, okay? Okay, we'll do a value of a equals four, and that's a float, okay? Let's check out the type of a, so that's float. b equals two, and we'll make that a double. Okay, let's do a divided by b. And as soon as we constraint one side, which in our case was the a, to a float, now they've not got a higher level of constraint. They're, they're stuck to, that has to be a float and that has to be a double. And then those can't mix and match. So then how you get out of there, so you'd have a C equals uh, 4, and it'd be of type float. Okay, so, and then you can do A divided by C. Now that would work. But what GHC does is it makes things polymorphic. I'll explain that in the next lesson. Um, but for now, you know, it's, it's understand a good little thing that you can do is if you want, you can be specific by determining what type exactly those numbers are. So prior to that, it was making it polymorphic, which would be explained, and that's why it'd work out of the box. GHC would do that. Once we started adding concrete types, then it wouldn't work anymore because it's saying, well, I float and double, I can't do that. It either wants both to be the same, or if they're not, then it won't work, okay? But I should demonstrate that it have also failed. So if we got D equals uh, 10, and then we'll make that an int, and then uh, e equals 2, and we'll make that an int. Then we'll get a different type of error message. Okay, so then if we go d divided by e, now we're getting something different because it's saying, well, there's no instance of fractional. Okay, so it's saying, well, this here it's saying, well, float and double don't match, but here it's saying, well, int isn't a fractional. So I can't even use them because these the these ints aren't part of the fractional family. Okay, now let's go back. Now we'll look at comparing values. 
So this is like simple arithmetic, um, less than, greater than. So let's have a look. So it's say x equals 5. Okay, so we've got that. So is 5 e equal to x? True. Is 4 equal to x? False. Okay, so double equal is equality. And if you have a single equal, in, in the REPL especially, I mean even in here, you know, if we do x equals 5, that's fine. But if we do x equals 5, that's popped it in. But if we do x double equals 5, so that's not fine. And then we do is 5 equals to 5. Then when we call it, true. Okay, because 5 is equal to 5. But then if we say 4, refresh. And it's false. Okay, so that's double equal, equality. So that's that. And then you can have greater. So let's check out some others. Is 4 greater than 5? False. Is 6 greater than 5? True. Okay, and then less than. Is 4 less than 2? No. Is 1 less than 2? True. So false, true. Yep. Um, Aha, uh -huh. so we've got equal and then we've got not equal. So it's a bit of a funny one, but if we do, so we've still got the value of x. No, we'll add another, so we'll do y equals 5, okay? And if we take y is not equal to 5. Oh, we've got it wrong way around. So y is not equal to 5. That's false. But is y not equal to 6. Yes, it's not equal to 6 because we set the value of y to 5. Okay, so that's saying it's a not equal. So let's have a look at the types of these guys. So types of double equal. So it's of the type class. Again, this is a, a constraint that we're going to use. So much like before we had a class constraint and fractional, this time we've got one of eq. And then we're saying this has to be of the type class eq that a has to be a type class eq and it returns a bool. The info of int, let's see if we can find it in there. Show or eq, here we go. There's an instance of eq where it's coming from. We'll explain that a bit further later. So this is explaining the type constraints. You know how we explain um, the equal greater than. Um, gives the type constraints. So within the types, we're saying that these both these a's are of the class ORD, and this is this, and it returns a bool. And in this instance, of the class EQ. So that's what it's saying. So of double equals is equality, and uh, less than is ORD, which is order. Yeah. So ORD is a type class that includes all things that can be ordered. Uh, you can do the same with chars. So chars have got their own instances. I'll have I'll, I've used the word instance, but we'll explain it in in a future lesson. But just think of it as um, we've got a char. We've got this is a type of char, and on it we've got an instance of EQ of the class EQ, and we want you know we handle how a char should react to anything that is EQ. So we're using this function as EQ. And we're going to tell, it tells how to handle every value as, as, a, as a char. In this instance, um, you can actually check for equality, um, which is fine, you know, between two characters. Are they the same? No, false. But also in Haskell, you can check its ordering. So is A less than B? Yes. Is A greater than B? No, because in the alphabet, A comes first, B comes second, C third, fourth, you know, etc. And then you can do, there's another precedence of in char of A, is that equal to a capital A? And that's false. There's an EQ instance for strings. Is a string duly equal to Chris? And that would be false. Okay. And then we can do, again, we can check for ordering. So is duly greater than Chris? And what it'll do in, in this case is it'll check, is J greater than C? And I go, yep, it is. So let's have a little demonstration. This is quite fun. So you can do uh, A, B, 
C, D, E. Is that greater than A, B, C, D, F? What do you think that output? It's false. It's not greater. Because if you look, it's going A, B, C, D. Okay, well, they're both the same, so neither one is greater. E. Okay, that's the next one. But this one does F. So that means F is actually greater than E, so it returns false. Okay, so you see that's how, how it's doing its ordering. You can do the same. I mean, this is essentially exactly the same as that. Uh, as I demonstrated in a previous lesson, you know, if, if I split up A, B, C, D, it's essentially it's essentially this, isn't it? Etc. Okay. So that's what that is. So, yep, that'll work. And then one, so we check those guys out. Right, this is a great place to stop this lesson. Uh, I pre-recorded this lesson and I found that it was actually an hour long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into two and then we'll continue there. Okay, well, see you in lesson five. Thanks.